Hey guys, my name is Garrett Hartle. This is Reach Out Reptiles. And this week we're going to be talking about virgin birth in reticulated pythons. Now this was an idea formally reserved for people of the faith, but known as parthenogenesis is actually something that we've been seeing more and more of. And I want to explain to you guys this week exactly how that works. So, virgin birth in pythons. Now, I know you might be thinking, Garrett, this is crazy, but I promise you, it's a real thing. The correct term for it is parthenogenesis. In the reptile industry, we like to have nicknames for everything. We call these things partho clutches. Actually, parthenogenesis is where a female has never been with a male and she actually clones herself. And that does happen, but probably more commonly what we're actually seeing is called gynogenesis, which is actually where the female has been with a male, but the genetic material within his sperm, that gamete, breaks down before it ever gets to the female. That process actually triggers the genetic code that she's put into her gamete, the egg, to start reproducing all on its own and it forms a half clone of the mother. I say half clone and we'll explain that a little bit later. But if this does happen, you've got to wonder like what are the implications as a reptile breeder? First of all, why does it happen? When does it happen? When it does happen, what is it exactly that, that does happen? How does that work? Especially with morphs and genetics and all this kind of stuff, which becomes really cool in parthenogenic clutches. This is definitely an exception to the rule. And if you're not familiar with the general rules of genetics within pythons, you might want to take a look at this video here where I explain that stuff in a little bit more detail. It's definitely caused a lot of waves you know this is here's another crazy thing you might not know happens if, i don't know if you've ever heard of a split father clutch where you have two actual fathers of varying numbers of the babies within one clutch it's pretty cool exciting when that happens to a breeder but maybe you didn't know that you can actually have like a split father partial you know fathered clutch partial virgin birth or parthenogenesis clutch and that's where things really start to get crazy because if there's only one or two animals that are parthoed out in that clutch you might think that they have the genetics of the male when they don't so it really starts to get pretty complicated and you know what why don't i take you back into the reptile room and we'll go ahead and i'll try to break it down a little bit easier for you there Okay, let me just get this out of the way right in the beginning. The biggest question is always gonna be, if a baby came from a parthenogenesis clutch, is it gonna be viable and healthy for its whole life? And the answer is a definitive, maybe. Sometimes they have had issues, we've seen that. Other times, like in the case with this little guy, uh, they actually do fine. This particular animal right here came from a mother who had no father and his mother looked absolutely insane. Just beautiful pattern and color. A lot of times the animals that come from these clutches just look a little bit funky. But obviously she went on to grow up and breed normally. His father was a Jampea Platinum. We have a viable baby in the second generation from a parthenogenesis animal. And the theory is that this occurrence actually happens a lot more than we would be aware because you can't always see it. First, let's figure out what it is that's actually happening here, and then I'll tell you a story of the most extreme example that I saw, asexual reproduction, parthenogenesis, virgin birth, whatever you want to call it. Now, if you guys did go back and watch that other video, you'll remember the law of Mendelian segregation, which basically explains how an animal splits and gives half of its genetic makeup to its offspring, and it looks kind of like this. We're going to pretend that these are your chromosomes. They contain all your genetic makeup and your DNA and everything like that. Now on those chromosomes are going to be different locations where genetic mutations can occur. These are called alleles. We're going to pretend for the sake of argument that this animal here is a sunfire het albino. Sunfire is incomplete dominant. 
So one copy of Sunfire means it's heterozygous. A homozygous Sunfire would be a super Sunfire. And an albino, a head albino, means it only has one copy of that hidden albino gene inside. So here's our head albino. And big S, little s is going to be our Sunfire. Now with Mendelian segregation, when these produce, this animal produces a gamete, be it a sperm or an egg cell, it's only going to get half of the genetic makeup. So here's your gamete with the chromosome and it can contain one or the other but not both. So if this female throws out a bunch of egg cells with half of her genetic makeup in each one, you're going to have a bunch of different combinations that she can throw because it'll contain either a big A or a non-albino or the albino gene. It'll either be a sunfire or a normal on each one. So let's say big A, big S, big A, little s. We'll have little a, big S, and little a, little s. These are the four different genetic combinations of these mutations that it's possible for that female to throw. Now in sexual reproduction, this egg cell is going to meet up with a gamete from the male, the sperm cell, that's going to have his own genetic mutations whatever they may be. And when that egg is fertilized, these two halves combine. Now in gynogenesis, this happens a little bit differently. Unfortunately, that material never made it into the egg. The presence of the male was there, meaning I bred two animals together and she laid a clutch as expected. But what happened was, for some reason, his genetic material degraded to the point of not contributing anything to this egg. However, that process triggered this to begin dividing. So the first time that divides, this set needs more information. And what happens is this set copies itself. Now the only genetic information it has to give is whatever is contained in that half. So in this case, it's going to be big A, big S. This is why we refer to them as half clones. If this female, which is a double heterozygous animal, a sunfire, head albino, clones herself, you're not going to get, as you might think, a full set of sunfire het albinos. No. The weird thing that happens with asexual reproduction, be it parthenogenesis, gynogenesis, or any other, is that every offspring, because it's doubled up, those traits have to be homozygously expressed. So the way these look is like this. Big A, big A, big S, big S means a non-albino super sun, a normal, straight normal, albino super sun. And over here, little a, little a, little s, little s is going to be your albino. Now notice a heterozygous animal is going to be something like a big A and a little a in there. Do we have any of that? Homozygous, 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 homozygous. Now, this example is exactly what happened in the first case of parthenogenesis that I saw where I knew exactly what had happened. Now in that clutch, the adult animal that we used were a purple snow like this one. I know that this is a golden child purple snow, guys, but play along, I don't have a normally patterned one. So we had a purple snow, which is an albino anery, which was being bred to a sunfire, like this girl, that was 100% het for white albino. Now, purple phase albino and white phase albino are allelic. They sit on the same location on that chromosome. We should have had normals, sunfires, lavenders, and lavender sunfires all het snow. What we got were normals, extremely good looking sunfires, whites, and extremely good looking white sunfires. But the strangeness didn't stop there. You see, without the presence of the male genetic makeup, that female has no ability to produce any male offspring. The entire clutch was female. Do, do, do. The plot thickens. We started looking at those sunfires, and as crazy as they were, I started to notice these, I don't think, are normal sunfires. These have to be super sunfires. How did we get all females and how did we get super sunfires? Gynogenesis. It was the only possible logical explanation. This clutch that I'm talking about was actually one of the first times that this was proven in a lab to be asexual reproduction in reticulated pythons. But because of the genetics involved, 
we already knew what was going on. We didn't need the test. So now that we know how it all works, here's the crazy issue that can happen. Let's say that some of those male gametes get through and they fertilize the eggs as expected. Now in a split father clutch where part of it's fathered and the other part is parthenogenesis, you would never know. Obviously it's a dead giveaway if your whole clutch is females. You've got to be scratching your head thinking, hmm, I might want to think about this one again. But what if it's not? What if most of the clutch was actually fathered by the intended sire? And only a few animals, which obviously are females, uh, let's say they come out as normals, but those are parthenogenesis animals, they're not going to be het for anything. There's no way the breeder would know. He would think that they were hets and sell them, and off they would go. Remember, there can be no heterozygous genes of any kind with a parthenogenesis clutch. So the animal either has it in homozygous form or it doesn't have it. If tiger is involved, it's going to be a super tiger. If platinum is involved, it's going to be an ultra ivory or a leucistic. If citron is involved, you're going to have titaniums and normals. It doesn't matter what the genetic thing you're working with. It cannot be het for one thing and homozygous for the other. If it's an asexual reproduction baby, everything it has is going to be homozygous. Just remember, as smart as we are, you can understand all the genetic code and things like that. There's still a lot that we don't know. <laughs> you know, sometimes the truth is miraculous. You guys have a great week, and we'll catch you next time.